Welcome to Exploring the East-West Play Engine. I'll be your host, David Earle. East-West is a company that's been around since 1988, when Doug Rogers decided that he wanted to create some high-quality sample libraries for samplers. His initial offering was the groundbreaking Bob Clear Mountain Drum Sample Library. I owned that library when I was just a pup, and all the kit pieces were guaranteed to punch through a mix. They were the gold standard at the time. For the next 25 years, I'd find myself using more and more East-West libraries for producing music for media. I have witnessed East-West win award after award for their innovative and awesome-sounding libraries. Every trade show that I attended to salivate over gear had me at their booth, listening intently to their new offerings. East-West has always been a weapon of choice that I return to again and again. And with the advent of the Play Engine, I was very interested to see how the Play Engine would compare to my EXS24 libraries. It was a pretty dramatic improvement, and the engine seemed a robust environment for the East-West arsenal. The East-West Play Engine now is in its fourth incarnation at the time of this course, and is installed with every East-West library, acting as a sample playback system. It's a flexible environment that handles mixing, articulation systems, effects, multi-timbral, and multi-output configurations. This course is dedicated to learning how this system works and how we can best configure it for different systems. I find the East-West libraries to be the European sports cars of my sample libraries. They are big, they are bad, and demanding. Before we get into the play engine itself, let's talk a little bit about system requirements. Most modern machines will run the play engine. Having multiple cores in your processor is pretty much unavoidable at this point. That said, if you're running East-West libraries, it's highly recommended that you run the play engine on the most awesome machine you can afford to use. These are deeply sampled libraries with a lot of scripting and other tech happening in the background. Running multiple instances of, say, Hollywood strings on a high-performance setting can bring a system to its knees. To save yourself the headache of CPU management, do your best to max out your CPU, your RAM, and your hard drive speed. Now, let's talk a little bit about hard drives for a second because they deserve a little bit of focus here. At the very least, get yourself a hard drive with a 7200 RPM speed and the best bridge between that drive and its output port that you can find. I don't recommend going to Apple and the Apple Store and buying some drive off the shelf, necessarily. I would suggest getting a hard drive by Buffalo, Glyph, or GTech to name a few of the good ones. They're made with performance in mind. Use Thunderbolt, or in a pinch, use USB 3.0. Now, Thunderbolt can move up to a staggering 20 gigabits per second if you count its two channels of data stream. USB 3.0 can send up to a theoretical 5 gigabits per second. Now, if you're using a hard drive with a 7200 RPM spinning platter, that might slow things up a bit. If you want more speed, solid-state drives are definitely the way to go these days. Prices are coming down, and the performance is ridiculous. You might need to split your library amongst a couple of these drives, so things can get expensive, but like I said, prices are going to steadily drop, and if you want your orchestral electronic library to just pop up in an instant, go with solid state. Time is money. Now as far as the settings in play, to make the play engine run smoothly, having a good handle on the system settings is totally vital. These libraries are some of the largest in the world, and making them run smoothly can be tricky. In the Play Engine, the Settings button takes us to four tabs related to the Play Engine's performance, Audio, Streaming, Overload, and Other. The Audio tab is mostly unimportant when running Play inside of a host DAW, unless you wish to detune the Play Engine or change its overall output volume. But when you're running the Play Engine in standalone, you'll get to assign your audio driver, sample rate, and buffer size. Now the streaming tab is where we can decide how many concurrent voices can play at one time in the play engine. This is essentially our polyphony tab. More voices equals more sounds able to play at the same time. And if you run into performance issues, this is usually the first setting to check. If sounds are choking off or glitching, try modifying this setting. You may find better performance. The overload tab allocates the maximum amount of processor the play can use. The default setting is 80%, and this is usually good for me, but you may want to experiment with it as well. Besides the Settings button, you may want to go to the Menu button to affect Play's performance settings. Use Streaming from Disk to decide whether Play is trying to stream the instrument directly from the hard drive or loading it directly into RAM. You may want to play with this if you've loaded a whole lot of instruments and they start glitching a little bit, 
having some go to RAM and some go from the disc may help with your playback. Use the advanced instrument properties to limit the voices of specific instruments. If you're getting glitchy performances from your instruments, you may also want to use the sample purge feature. Now, those are the main settings of play, and it's time for us to really get our hands dirty and explore this really awesome environment. All right, let's get started.